These paintings and drawings are not the work of a human, at least not directly, but of a robot. One of the best known humans in the realm of robot art is Patrick Trezet. He has three robots working for him in his London studio, and they are all called Paul. Here, they're getting ready for a drawing session. It's complicated because for me, they are machines, you know, I write the programs, but then they've made my career, you know, and they are also kind of self-portraits. So it's a complex relationship between the, between me and the robots, but but also for me, they are puppets. They do, you know, they do most of the time what I want them to do. What they do is scan a room with their camera eyes and recognize human faces. Then they draw what they see, including shadows. It can take up to 40 minutes. Tresse has a master's in computer science. He made and programmed his robots himself. Even though Sabina Toupin has posed more than 20 times for Paul, or Paul, or Paul, she says it still feels weird. The machine is basically imitating human behavior, so you're kind of like familiar with the movements, but at the same time, not really, because you are aware that is not a pair of eyes, that's a camera. So, you know, but then at the same time, the movements are so naturally done that you're slightly confused at times. Many who see the robots at work feel the same way. At least once a month they perform in public. This event was in Paris last year. As an artist and as a scientist, Trezé is interested in the interaction of human and machine. People tend to ascribe human attributes to the robots. As soon as the thing uh, has a behavior that makes sense, so look at something and react, you have to understand and you react to it. It's animal, it, it, it just, we can't help it. Robots doing art is not new, nor is computer science examining art. The British artist Harold Cohen started developing his Aaron program in the late 1960s. It decides what to draw or paint. Its output has been shown in museums around the world. Other robots respond to external influences. This one transforms sounds into impulses that determine the movements of its painting arm. The E. David painting robot is the brainchild of scientists at the University of Constance. It imitates a range of painting techniques and uses them to depict new motifs. The question underlying the project is, can machines be taught to be creative? If you want, you have a bird and a plane. So they do the same thing, but not at all in the same way. So in the same way, artificial intelligence can be like that. For example, you would think that to do a drawing like that, you have to have some intelligence or sensibility. But the system is not special intelligent because at the moment there's no intelligent system. It doesn't exist. Artificial intelligence doesn't exist at the moment. Each new art robot seeks to be brainier and more creative than the last, pushing the boundaries of artificial intelligence. Tresse is a visiting research fellow at Goldsmiths College, University of London. He has always been fascinated by both art and technology. After he sought treatment for mental health problems, he discovered that he had lost his passion for art, for doing things by hand. Now Paul the robot does it for him. Computing now is used for everything, so why not the arts? I mean, no. Uh, of course, there is uh, this kind of speciality, but a lot of artists use computers uh, in one way or another uh, to do their work, it's just, just a tool. His adjutants may be very adept and able, and he may have delegated plenty of work to them, but Tresse says he is still the artist. I don't think they're going to take over art because you still have an artist behind it. There are people in the scientific community or technologist community who are not artists to try to get a system to make art. It just doesn't work because they don't have the, this knowledge of, of what is art. It is very unlikely that robots will soon be doing their own thing, 
as in creating their own art. Still, what they are already doing today is fascinating and just a bit uncanny.